Hi, and welcome back to Football Made Simple. Between 2004 and 2007, Jose Mourinho took the Premier League by storm. During his spell, he racked up the silverware, including two Premier Leagues, two League Cups, an FA Cup and a Community Shield. His first season in particular stood out, only conceding 15 goals all season, still a record, only losing once away to Manchester City and setting a record of 95 points total in the season, only surpassed over a decade later to the aforementioned Manchester City. But what tactics did the trailblazing Mourinho use to achieve such greatness? In this video, we take a look. Firstly, his preferred formation was the 4-3-3. This was significant as most teams at the time were married to the 4-4-2 and this choice of formation gave Mourinho certain advantages around the pitch that we will get to soon. But his preferred personnel looked like this. Now, let's start with the deep build-up play. Petr Cech was one of the best keepers in the world at the time and a great shot stopper. However, having the ball at his feet was not his strength, nor was it required of keepers of that time. As a result, from the goal kick he would often go long, which made sense, especially with the ideal target man in Didier Drogba. However, in open play, especially if the centre backs were free, Czech would often roll it out to either of them. Both Czech and Carvalho were fairly comfortable on the ball, looking to find teammates, and the behaviour of the opposition's 4-4-2 would affect their next step. If opponents looked to sit in a deep block, the centre backs would carry the ball up the pitch, but when pressured fairly high up, the 3 versus 2 in midfield gave them different options. If the central route was closed off, the ball could go wide to Cole or Pereira. Two of the midfield three could then look to provide an option for the pass to feed, whilst the third, usually Lampard, looked to provide depth. So if one of the opponent's pivots cut off one option, the other man would be free for the short pass into feet and look to get them playing. Alternatively, if they push up both pivots to cut off the short option, it would leave Lampard in space for the dinked ball into midfield. Another option, if the opposition looked to push their wide man onto the fullback in possession, the chip ball down the line could have Chelsea's dangerous wingers 1 vs 1 against their opposite number. Or the spare central midfielder could also move into the vacated space to receive the ball and get time on it if both of the opposition pivots chose to stay on their men in the centre. Even if Chelsea chose to go down the centre on the build-up, it still created some problems. If the opposition stayed tighter to Lampard and Essien, Makaleli would have time and space on the ball. And although Makaleli is renowned for the defensive side of his game, he was perfectly capable of driving the team forwards or rotating the ball around the pitch as the metronome to shift the opposition around. However, if the opposition committed a man to stop Makaleli, Essien would simply drop to create a double pivot and the two-on-one and helping to keep possession. And of course, sometimes the opposition, perhaps chasing the game, committed two men for the deep pivots. And this is where we see a difference in Mourinho, as more possession-oriented managers would drop the third midfielder deep to rotate the ball in this region and slowly work the opposition out of position to move up the pitch. However, Mourinho's Chelsea were a much more vertical team and chose to use the extra man to create immediate attacking danger. In Didier Drogba, they had a single striker whose movement and physicality meant that he was often able to occupy both of the centre-backs, but he would usually pull onto one of them and back into the defender. Both Terry and Carvalho had the ability to find him with a long ball and he would often knock the ball down to Lampard, who is now in space and could look to have a shot from range, something he was notorious for. It is also important to note that the wingers in Duff and Robin in this phase would also be making arrowing runs and at times Drogba would flick the ball onto them. Or if a centre back pushed to Lampard after the knockdown it could potentially leave a gap for the through ball into either of the wingers. Mourinho was vocal about these advantages of the 4-3-3 saying If I have a triangle in midfield, Claude Makaleli behind and the two others just in front, I will always have an advantage against a pure 4-4-2 where the central midfielders are side by side. That's because I will always have an extra man. It starts with Makaleli, who is between the lines. If nobody comes to him, he can see the whole pitch and has time. If he gets closed down, it means one of the two other central midfielders is open. And if they are closed down and the other team's wingers come inside to help, it means there is space now for us on the flank. 
either for our own wingers or for our fullbacks. There is nothing a pure 4-4-2 can do to stop things. But when they progressed more slowly into midfield, the midfield three all had different roles. With Makaleli being the deeper lying, more defensively focused midfielder, whilst Essien took up the box to box role, supplying the forwards and the defenders would support as needed. And finally, Lampard, the most attacking of the three, who at times was practically a second striker, working beautifully in tandem with Drogba. But in matches where they were under pressure and needed to keep possession better, Lampard played a more traditional central midfield role, allowing his passing range to flourish. But importantly, in matches where Chelsea were behind and needed a goal, or they were generally playing weaker opposition, Mourinho would adjust, with Ida Gudjonsson coming in in place of Essien. Gudjonsson was naturally a centre forward, or a second striker, meaning that he was highly offensive alongside Lampard as a midfielder. This was facilitated by Makaleli being able to cover the distance behind the two midfielders by himself. But for the most part, it was Essien or Thiago alongside Lampard. Both fullbacks, in Paolo Ferreira and soon Ashley Cole, were great going forwards and looked to attack as often as they could. Depending on the game state, Mourinho usually preferred to only allow one fullback very high at a time, allowing them to maintain defensive solidity, with Makaleli ready to provide the cover in case of a turnover in the deep regions. However, when goals were needed, both could advance, especially if Essien was in the team, as between him and Makaleli, they would be able to provide ample cover in the wide regions in case of the turnover. And both fullbacks were happy to consistently overlap their winger. Speaking of the wingers, and this front four in general, they had more freedom and fluidity than they are given credit for. Lampard and Drogba would roughly remain between the width of the 18-yard box, but could interchange vertically, as Drogba was willing to drop slightly deeper and Lampard loved to run beyond him. But the wingers had more fluidity, both starting as traditional wingers, as Drogba was an obvious target for crossing, although both could often shoot from inside channels. But Mourinho became famous for consistently shuffling his wingers mid-match. Depending on where the ball was, Lampard often moved wider in support to help create more of an overload on that side depending on the situation. On the right, Robin began to utilise his famous cut-in-and-shoot routine from range. Damien Duff on the other side looked to get into the box more often. But the fullbacks were also key to this phase of play. When they overlapped, Drogba often attacked the centre of the box, with the far side winger looking to arrive, and Drogba of course won his fair share of headers. However, with the centre backs worried about Drogba, Lampard often ran off the back of the defensive midfielder to the edge of the box, where the ball could be cut back for the finish. As a result, he was famed for arriving late into the box to score. A quick look at the defence. At times when they lost the ball, they would look to press a bit higher up. However, when they dropped deep, the wingers would also look to track back, with Drogba staying high to form a 4-5-1, as on the transition, Drogba could hold up the ball, giving the wingers time to join him. But their deep defence was most important, as the back five were all highly skilled and disciplined and able to concentrate for long periods without breaking rank. By staying narrow, it made them hard to break down through the centre and they could afford to allow crosses due to two commanding centre-backs and a keeper who could dominate the air and claim the ball. All of this was bound together by the glue that is Jose Mourinho, able to create a siege mentality, us against the world, that made them come together and sacrifice themselves for each other giving them the edge against most opposition. Mourinho's Chelsea took the Premier League by storm, providing a truly different set of tactics led by the use of the 4-3-3 and fullbacks who loved to bomb forward. It saw the best of a young, vibrant Mourinho, astute transfers and players who would all run through brick walls for Mourinho, all culminating in one of the greatest teams that the Premier League has ever seen. As always, the tactics varied from match to match depending on the opposition and not every single tactic could be covered in this video. But I'd love to know, what other memorable tactics did he use at Chelsea not mentioned in the video? Drop it down in the comments below. But that's all for today and remember, keep it simple.